Now there's a number of reasons why we decided to start homesteading a few years ago, but the number one reason overall is more self-reliance and sustainability. Inflation's gone through the roof. If you're one of those people who believe it's coming under control, that's wonderful. But for the rest of us, we needed answers, Scarlett. We needed answers to things like rising food costs and rising energy costs. And while we have some answers in the form of solar panels on our home, we're not truly off grid. We're still tied into the grid with an energy sharing system. It's something in the state of Florida. But if the power goes down in the event of a hurricane or something similar, we have no electricity. So we were really fortunate enough to be offered an opportunity by Renogy here for a full off-grid solar system. It's a bit daunting for me because I've never truly assembled something like that before. But as you'll see in the video, I was able to figure it out. And if I can figure it out, so can you. It's a 400 watt system with two batteries. It can power like a freezer for 24 to 48 hours in addition to running lights, power tools, and all of that nature at the same time. And this is going to be a good addition to our setup here on the homestead. It's going to increase our sustainability and our self-reliance. So guys, as you'll see in this video, I'll unbox the Renogy full off-grid solar system. We're going to look at it together. We're going to set it up together. And as you'll see, even a novice like me can set it up. So hopefully this will give you some confidence if you're looking at a system like this yourself. So Scarlett over here, she's ready. I'm ready. Let's get into it, guys. Let's take a look at the Renogy off-grid solar system. Finally, at long last, my solar workshop kit had come in from Renogy, and I was really excited. I started unboxing it, and I became pretty overwhelmed immediately because I had never done a project like this before. But what I started to realize was it's actually not so complex at all. If you think about it, that the solar setup has basically four or five main parts. You have the solar panels, they produce the electricity. You have this inverter, this is what you'll be plugging into when you're ready to use electricity. There's the solar charger, that's what converts the electricity from the panels into usable energy. And then you have your batteries, and the batteries are pretty self-explanatory. That is where the power will be stored. And so once I kind of got a grasp of, okay, these are the components, this is what they do, I realized that, hey, these Renogy products, they're actually pretty, pretty sturdy components that they give you. And I really like the solar panels. They have like a hard protective covering. It's clear so you can see through it, but it keeps the panels themselves from getting damaged or destroyed. And they were actually really durable panels, really nice panels. The way that the panels would be mounted later on are by these little metal clips, as you can see here and those metal clips raise the panel up off of the mounting surface and you'll see pretty soon here it actually does a wonderful job. So the first thing I needed to do was create a location where my solar setup would be installed. And since I didn't have one already, I went ahead and purchased this rack. It's a 5,000 pound rack, sturdy one I got from Home Depot. I went ahead and snapped it together and I figured, okay, for my particular use case, I'm gonna store animal feed on the bottom of this rack and on the top two shelves of the rack, that's gonna be all the guts of my solar system. And so when I'm out doing projects under the carport, my carport operates more or less as a little shed. We don't have a shed here on the homestead. So we use the carport like a shed. When I'm out working in the, in the carport, I can go ahead and power power tools, the shop vac, lights, saws, whatever it is that I really need. And I can also use it as a recharging station to charge some of my electric tools like my uh, Ryobi tools that I use here on the farm. So one of the problems with this whole idea was the roof of the carport is getting a bit old and it was pretty musty. So we grabbed some outdoor cleaner, I grabbed a mop, and I really quickly hit it with that outdoor cleaner on the roof. I was able to get rid of a lot of that mildew that was building up, and I didn't want to build this fancy setup on a mildewy surface. So we went ahead, we cleaned up the carport itself, and we got our rack in place.
Well, folks, I'm taking a break because it is hot out here, way too hot. I think it's 98 degrees Fahrenheit today with 90-something percent humidity. It's a scorcher. But good news, we've got our rack together, and as you can see, I've already got a couple bags of grain here. So basically, the way that this shelving system, the way that this rack is going to work, I'm going to store all my grain for my cattle here. They get a bag of grain a day. So a lot of times, I have as many as 15 bags all stacked up. This is a 5,000 pound weight capacity rack, so it definitely will be able to hold, you know, at least 20 bags of 50 pound grain. Now up top, nestled up underneath the roof of the carport is going to be the meat and potatoes, the guts of our solar system. We're gonna have the batteries there. There's something called an inverter in a combiner box. Now listen, I'm gonna be very transparent. There's a lot of channels that you guys can watch and people, it's like they have a PhD in the thing that they're talking about. They already know all the specifics. They can rattle off numbers about solar systems or anything really, but here on this channel, I'm a simple guy. I'm a common guy. I've never put together a solar system before. So we're gonna dive into it together and we're gonna see, hey, maybe if you've never done it either, how difficult would it be for you? Hopefully it won't be that challenging. But we're gonna put all of the electrical nuts and bolts up on the top, top, top of this rack. We're gonna make it so that it's safe from the elements. You definitely don't want any water getting up there. And then we're gonna install the panels on the top of the carport. So what this space is going to become is it's gonna be, become like a workspace or a workshop for me. I'll be able to get my animals food from these racks down below. And if we ever need to run power tools, lights, anything of that nature, I've been running, you know, two extension cords connected to one another from the house. That's not really good long term. We'll be able to run those tools right out here in the carport and get stuff done a lot easier on the homestead. Another thing that's going to be really useful about this off-grid solar setup is our home, we have a Generac backup. So we are solar, but we're not technically off-grid solar. We don't have batteries that store that energy. We're still tied into the grid. So in the event of an outage, our Generac is what would run the home. And you know, here in Florida, we're used to things like hurricanes taking us offline for two, three days at a time. Now the Generac can run the house with no kind of grid electricity for two to three weeks. But if we use this off-grid solar system, to run, say, a couple of freezers, something of that nature, we can take the load off of the Generac, and the Generac, instead of running two to three weeks, could run a month or longer. So in the event of an outage, we will use this off-grid solar system to relieve some of the pressure on the Generac. So it's kind of dual purpose. It's pretty exciting, and it's gonna increase our self-reliance and our sustainability here on the homestead. So let's take a look at these electrical components. Let's see if we can make sense of how to put this thing together and see how it goes. Come on. So with our setup all ready to go, the only thing left to do was, well, put the thing together itself, the system itself. So what I found was knowing this combiner box. The combiner box is more or less the heart of your whole operation. And as you can see here, it has a positive bar and a negative bar. And if you think about it the way that you think about a human heart, all of your blood goes ahead and ties in at that central point. This combiner box is where all of your electrical is going to meet and where that exchange is gonna take place. So you go ahead, your batteries are gonna tie into this combiner box, your charge controller is gonna tie into this combiner box, and your charge controller is what makes that usable electricity. So you'll have a diagram to work with through Renogy if you do buy one of these kits, but just know that the electricity that you get from the solar panels is not immediately usable. It's gonna run through that charge controller first and then go to the combiner box. So the very first step that I decided to do was to install the solar panels on the roof of my carport. And there's these little brackets underneath the panels that kind of raise the panels up off the ground or off the roof of the structure that you're tying into. The installation itself was great, but I had a bit of a hard time getting on the roof of my carport. So we went ahead and we used the tractor to cheat a little bit. I was putting a lot of my weight on the tractor so that I didn't, you know, fall through the roof of the carport. 
So I was leaning on the tractor. I went ahead and I drilled those panels right in. They went in really flawlessly. They look really nice. And I can't say enough how impressed I was with the construction of them. They're really durable and they have that protective coating over the front, which will keep them from getting damaged in shipping or keep them from getting damaged in regular use as well. So after I had the panels in, the thing that I wanted to do was connect my electricity last. It's very important that when you're working with live electrical that basically I said, hey, I'm gonna hook everything up that's not electrical first. So I'm not gonna hook up my batteries until the very end. And I'm not gonna plug in the panels themselves until the very end. I'm gonna get everything else set up first. And there's a number of ways you can set up the batteries. You can do them in parallel, you can do them in series. But with the combiner box, I was able to just take each individual battery and connect it straight to the combiner box. So we went from the charge controller straight to the combiner box, and we went from each individual battery straight to the combiner box. And it was actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be to get the whole thing set up, and it immediately started working as soon as I plugged in those electrical components. So when I got this kit together for the first time and I started putting it together, you know, there is no shortage of information online, people doing DIYs, explaining this, but there's not a lot out there that really helps a lay person or someone who's not familiar with a lot of electrical terminology. You know, people want to talk about this many amps, this many watts, this et cetera, et cetera. But what about for somebody who's very unfamiliar and unsure about this and looking at the schematics and looking at a lot of the technical jargon can be really overwhelming and I wish that there had been someone to kind of give me a very straightforward explanation as to how an off-grid solar system like this works. So I've kind of got it in my head in a certain way and maybe this will help someone out there if they're looking to install one of these themselves. So the way that I kind of consider it is you have this combiner box and the combiner box is basically like the heart of the operation. It's where all of your different parts are meeting and they're combining. And inside of the combiner box, there are two bars. One bar is going to tie in all of your positive currents and the other bar is going to tie in all of your negative currents. So you're gonna run cable from your negative bar in the combiner box to the negative output in your battery and you're going to run a cable from the positive bar in the combiner box to the positive output in your battery. So if you think about the combiner box as being the heart of the solar system, it starts to make a lot of sense. Power is going to come in through your solar panels, but it's not immediately usable energy. It has to be transformed first. And so the very first place where that energy is going to go in the system is to the charge controller. The charge controller handles transforming that energy into something that we can use. And from the charge controller, it goes to that combiner box. So now your combiner box has the power that's being generated by your solar panels. Well, obviously we need to connect our batteries to that combiner box in order to store the energy. So the positive and negative leads are gonna come off those batteries into the combiner box. And then finally, what about when it's time to use the energy? Well, we're gonna have a positive and a negative lead coming off of our combiner box to the inverter. Now, obviously, there's all different kinds of system sizes that you can get depending on your needs. Building one of these systems is gonna be sort of like building a computer if you've ever done that before. You know, you might want more memory, you might want more computing power, you might want a better graphics card. And the same thing goes for this. You might want bigger sized batteries. You may want more than one. You may want more than two batteries, depending on how much storage you're really looking to do. You may want more, you may want less panels but the general principles are most likely going to remain the same. Now there's different ways that you can wire the panels themselves. You can wire them in parallel or you can wire them in series. And there is some electrical jargon and lingo and technicalities that go into that. But I just followed the diagram that Renogy provided me with and I was able to get it all hooked up and it's very, very, very plug and play. You know, the charge controller itself, I was a bit worried that once I got the charge controller powered that I would have to 
to tinker with various settings on it to make sure that, you know, my amperage and my wattage and etc. was correct. And I'm sure you probably can do that, but very hands off. I plugged into it and it immediately was set up properly and the entire system started working. So it's very, very, very plug and play with these components here. So one thing that I would say is if you're a novice like me, I was able to get this whole system up and running absolutely by myself without any kind of outside help. And I'm pretty proud of myself because I am a novice. You know, I don't know a whole lot about something like this. It's very daunting. I actually have spoken to a couple of people who are looking at doing kind of off-grid projects of their own, whether it's like van life, RV life, maybe building a small off-grid cabin. And for someone who doesn't know how to do this, it can be really, really overwhelming. And you might go ahead and say, you know what, maybe just like getting one of those solar battery banks, because they make portable solar battery banks. That might be better for me because it's it's a lot more plug and play and there's less, you know, they're they're intimidated by building the system. But I'm here to tell you that I don't know anything about building a solar system and I was able to do it. It works flawlessly. I would have somebody come and check my work and I actually did have my father come behind me and make sure that I had done everything properly. But you can do this. So if you think about it in simple terms, simple terms, make sure your components are properly sized for one another so you don't have any issues. And the Renogy people can help you and there's ways that you can look into that on the website. So make sure that you know the panels that you've got, the charge controller that you've got, the batteries that you've got are all compatible size wise. And then from there, you know, it helped me to think of it in that way. So your combiner box is basically the heart and all of the blood or all of your electrical is flowing into that heart. So all of your positive and all of your negative components will meet in that combiner box. And then from there, it distributes to different aspects of the system. You know, it may go to the battery, it may come from the battery, it may go to the inverter when you're ready to use the power. But thinking about it that way really helped me, so maybe it'll help you. And well, folks, there you have it, the Renogy off-grid solar power system. So again, as I said, I'm no expert and I may have messed up a little bit of the technical jargon in this video, but you know what? The point stands, I am a novice. And if I was able to figure out how to set up the entirety of the solar system by myself, then you too could surely do it as well. I feel a lot more confident now with systems like this after putting this one together. And I cannot thank Renogy enough for giving me the opportunity to assemble this and unbox it and share it with you guys here on the channel. Now, basically, this particular system that we have is a 400 watt system. It's four 100 watt panels plus the two batteries, as well as all the guts, the intermediate components. And my idea for this system is I've now basically turned my carport into a little bit of an outdoor workshop. I can do a lot of work out here now without having to run a bunch of extension cords from the house, and that's going to be a major time saver. Now, the other thing, too, is this particular system allegedly can run a standing fridge slash freezer for 24 to 48 hours in addition to a bunch of other things at the same time. So you could run lights off of it. You could run power tools off of it. You could do pretty much whatever you need in addition to running that standing fridge freezer for like 24, 48 hours. Now, I believe you can get even more time out of it as well if there's sunny days during that potential power outage where you'd be running your fridge or freezer off the system. The sun is hitting the panels. I think you can get a lot longer than just 48 hours with those particular uses. So as you guys know, we are basically off-grid-ish. We're not truly off-grid while we have solar on the house. We're technically tied into our power company. So if we have a power outage, like for example, during a hurricane, we will lose power even though we have solar on the house. And that's why we have the Generat gas generator here which should provide us because we have a gas tank buried with like three weeks of power so the whole house could run off grid for three weeks in the event of a really bad hurricane or something like that but with this Renogy off-grid solar system if we do lose power in the future we're going to get much more bang for our buck out of our generator because I'm going to run as much stuff as I can off this solar system first and that's going to reduce the load on our generator giving us more usage out of it so kind of helping us be just a little bit more self-sufficient and a little bit more self-reliant. And every little bit helps. It all adds up in the end. So Renogy, thank you so much for the opportunity. Guys, if I can do it, you can too. And if you like homesteading related content, outdoor related content, outdoor product reviews, uh, family farming, we've got chickens, we've got cattle here on the channel, here on the homestead, 
Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and check us out for more videos in the future. Guys, I'm Justin. I hope you enjoyed this video, and God bless. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.